beautiful souls. It's Robin, and you're listening to the Live Life Balance Podcast. I'm so excited that you dropped by today, prioritizing you and your wellness. This podcast is for my empty nester mamas, women who are getting close to this new chapter, who have dipped one toe in, or who are fully embracing this new phase. This is for the mamas who are ready to take back their health, to live their best lives. If you're looking for an authentic, supportive community, you're definitely in the right place. It's a space for us to learn how to prioritize ourselves again. I'll be your guide pointing you to ideas and tools that you can experiment with to see what feels good for you. You'll also hear guests talking about their journeys and what's worked for them. Together, we're going to learn how to use the 1% shift method to create little shifts and habits that, who knows, maybe become your non-negotiables to feel your best. By feeling our best, we can show up in our purpose and live the most joyful life, even in the challenging times. And boy, this new chapter can seem challenging, but I can assure you we're not alone. Some of the topics we're going to talk about are self-love, self-care, nutrition, daily toxins, food swaps, mindset, and reframing our thoughts. I hope you leave each time feeling a little more empowered and at ease to take a step or two that will allow you to shine. Are you ready? If you said yes, take a nice deep breath and say, I am ready. Now let's get into it. Hey, welcome back to Live Life Balance Podcast. I'm so excited today to be here having an authentic conversation with Mary Dibble. She is a mom of three. She's a wife and she's a life and success coach. She helps empower hardworking moms to pursue their aspirations, purpose, and authenticity. She she knows how, understands too well how easy it is to get lost in the many roles that we play as women and the importance of getting connected to our authentic selves and chasing after our dreams, no matter the obstacles. She believes in supporting and empowering each other on the journey so that we can all find success and happiness um, that we want to create and that we all desire. It was such an awesome conversation. We had a lot of um, talk about the fixed mindset and growth mindset. We talked about um, self-love and self-empowerment. So I really think you're going to get a lot of this episode. And so let's get into it. Hi, Mary. How are you? Good. How about yourself? I'm great. Thank you so much for coming on today. Um, I love getting to know you. I love what you do. I feel like you have a lot of valuable insight into certain things that I really feel like people need in order to grow on their wellness journeys. So um, I'm just excited to get to know you a little bit better and for you to kind of tell everybody what, what you do. So if you want to just give us a little background to get started, that'd be awesome. Absolutely. Thank you so much again for having me. First of all, I appreciate it. I'm excited to be here. My name is Mary Dibble. Um, I am 36 years old. I am a mom of three, a wife and a life and success coach. Um, a little bit of background for me. I'm, I actually currently reside in Morganton, North Carolina. I originally was born in Bronx, New York, but it's a kind of a little crazy story of how I ended up in North Carolina, but I, I did. I actually came here in North Carolina when I was only in the third grade. So as I feel like I pretty much was raised in the South. Um, growing up was really challenging for me um, where I was. Uh, my mom's from Trinidad. My dad's from Puerto Rico, but my dad was never really in my life growing up. So I never really learned how to speak Spanish or anything like that. And so I was very insecure. Um, I was very judgmental of myself. I had a a mom who she has a really dark past and history that she's been through. So growing up, she just was very negative mindset. She had a very bad negative mindset. So I grew up in that environment. She didn't believe in true love. She didn't believe that people like us could ever be successful, that we're just handed the cards we're dealt and we just have to deal with it and accept it. And I don't, (laughs) I don't even know how this, in spite of all that, I was able to still try to have a positive outlook, but I'm grateful, I guess you could say, because we got evicted when I, when we, when I was only 15 years old and I pretty much had to go out there on my own and go from place to place. And at this point in my life, I was, uh, you know, addicted to drugs. So I have a past where I, I had got hooked on drugs and it was because I was in such a chaotic time in my life where I didn't know who I was. I didn't love who I was. I was just trying to 
get by and survive. So it was easy for me to be influenced with the wrong people, to attract the wrong people into my life. And, um, and it just, it was a really hard time. But when I was about 18 years old, I got to a point where I had been thrown out of where I was at at the time. And I tried to go back to my mom and my sister, but they didn't want me because I was into drugs. And so they were like, you got to go to rehab or to this place called the Holy Way, which was like her best friend's parents' house. And so I decided to, you know, take a chance and say, well, you know, I'm not going to rehab. So, okay, fine. I'll just crash at their place for a couple of weeks and figure things out. But only three days into that, God got me. And so I was able to change my life around there, completely sober up or whatnot. And even after that two weeks ended up being six months of my life. And it really was a good time for me. Um, after leaving there, I ended up falling for a guy who was still bad for me and he ended up being abusive to me and got me back on drugs. So I even had a, a time in my life where I fell again and even worse than before almost. And so I've had my struggles, but what really transformed me is later on in life, um, through all my you know, experiences, the bad experience, the bad relationships was meeting a coach, a life coach who taught me the value of self-love and the power of the mindset. And through that, I was able to truly shift what I was conditioned to believe my whole life, even things I didn't even realize that, oh my God, that's part of me that I didn't even know was there. She helped me to bring that forward, to uncover those things, but then to also gain back that control of being like, well, even though this might be part of my conditioning, doesn't mean I have to stay that way. doesn't mean I have to allow the things that I've been through to find who I am today or even bring me forward into my future any, you know, more results um, or outcomes. So I have, I have the power of that. And so that's kind of what led me into wanting to become a life coach myself, because I know there's so many people out there who have these struggles, who, you know, um, I feel so alone because I think that was a big part of it for me. I never had support. I never had good friends. I mean, I had friends here and there who were kind of there for me when they needed me, but then they would abandon me when I needed them. Um, I just was all over the place. And um, it wasn't until I, I found that and I started doing the work on me and letting go of things, um, changing my mindset, because apparently I, I had a major scarcity mindset, which is one that, you know, where you believe in the lack of, you focus on the lack of, and, and it, it's easy stuff where you grow up with as far as like how you are as a child, where your parents are like, oh, money doesn't grow on trees and we can't afford that. So when that builds up in you and your subconscious programming that you don't even realize that leads you to have that belief and therefore the results happen for you because that's what you're believing and that's what your actions are bringing forth. So changing that from scarcity to an abundance mindset was amazing to truly believe that there's limitless possibilities out there. And that when you choose to believe in yourself and in your dreams and just go for it, come what may things happen for you, things start changing. And, and I'm seeing it every day ever since I made that decision to do that change, you know? And I also, of course, because of my mom, you know, I'm not blaming her, forgive me. I should rephrase that, reframe that. But um, despite some of my upbringing and stuff, I was able to realize that I had also a fixed mindset where it's like, you only have to, the natural talents, like you have to be talented in order to have that success. You're just born that way, or you're just lucky enough to have that. There's not enough for everybody. It, we're all in competition with one another. And that's very dangerous and that's very limiting. And so having more of that um, growth mindset is so important to me because I believe in growing and learning and improving and going out there and getting the skills that you need and learning what you learn and then turning around and, and give, giving back and creating something beautiful, creating what you want out of life. So that's where I am today, where I, as a life and success coach who helps empower moms, hardworking moms to embrace their purpose and pursue their aspirations and connect with their authenticity and live a life that they desire. 
That's what I'm all about. And I believe that the mindset's a huge part of that and how we can shift from one that keeps and holds us back to one that attracts and brings forth all of our dreams. Yeah. First of all, I, your story is amazing. Um, I, I appreciate you so much for being authentic and telling the true story because you are right. There are so many people that have not the same story, but they have a story and the story that has told them that there's lack of, or that they're not enough or so much stuff that we learn from, I think it's ages zero to nine is like the theta state, I think it's called. And that's the state where whatever you're told over and over and over becomes part of your programming. Um, and then when you get to, I don't know exactly what age, but there is an age where the, you that stuff can start to shift. And usually you go one way or the other. And it really depends on what you've been surrounded with, what, where you're at, your, your life circumstances for kids. We don't choose the circumstance for kids. We're given the circumstance until a certain age, because you're not an adult. You don't have the wherewithal to know adult things. You don't know what you don't know, because again, you're still just a baby really. I mean, until you're a teenager, really. Um, I, I think that, you know, a couple of things that I, I heard, first of all, for someone to meet you today, they would not know that you had those characteristics, those traits, those things embed in you, because you just don't even exude that same behavior or mindset or personality or what you bring forth to people. So number one, I love the fact that you are showing people what is possible because it is possible. Everything that we have in our minds that are not serving us, we do have the control and the responsibility to, to change that, to change the narrative, to change the mindset. Um, I do believe, you know, there, that the fixed mindset is one of which does not serve us. It doesn't serve us because it doesn't allow us to grow individually and, yes that's very important for not only personal growth, but when you are a parent, it's important for you to be modeling for your children. Um, so, you know, I get a lot of, I've had a lot of conversations with people, you know, saying some of the things you said, like, well, this is just my life. This is just the way it goes. And, yeah. um, you know, so-and-so's always gets everything and so and so and I this is just the the cards I was dealt you know and so I just learned to and I think you know having a life coach or somebody in your corner reminding you often that it is a program it's a mind program that you've been running for so long that it takes time to get out of and change things anything takes time if you want to you know create a different you know, daily life, you know, if you want yeah, to create life. better eating habits, habits if you want mm -hmm. to create, you know, better movement, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. It takes work. And what I also loved about your story was you had a dip, you went back because you go back to typically what you know. And if something's not working, you go back to what you know. And again, most people have to know in certain situations, dips are going to happen a lot. And to yeah. me, dips are challenges, really. They're challenges for you to see like, oh, wait a second. Mm -hmm. I don't really remember. I don't like that anymore. I used to, but you know what? This isn't working for me anymore. And so I, I have a, a podcast on this, but it's like when you face a dip and then you you bring yourself out of it, when that's a repeated thing, you know, when you, when you get into the dip, you come out of it faster because you've seen light on the other side. You've seen what could be possible by even experiencing it just one time. So when someone is so true. really out there and they're trying to, you know, change their life, whatever part of their life they thinking, they're thinking that they want to change. The one thing that you said that is a hundred million percent spot on you have to make the choice. You have to make the decision. And when you're full in, in that decision, the courage that you need will come out. The evidence that you need will be seen. And yes. so one of the things I wanted to ask you was when you were going from like that fixed mindset to a growth mindset, 
it's a, it's a process, right? There's a learning curve in that. And so somebody who's listening, what would be one or two tools or tips you could give somebody to help start that transformation of here I am, this is what's been programmed. This is what's been running in my subconscious, but I really don't want to live there anymore. And I want to, you know, segue over to something a little different. What would you say to them? So, you know, it's awesome right there is always the number one thing is awareness. If you can work to build that awareness around that in the first place of what are these thoughts? What are these beliefs that, that are holding you back? That's where the starting point is of then you can start working to reframe that, change that negative talk. Every time you catch yourself, it's okay. Don't be mad at yourself. Don't be disappointed. Like, oh man, I'm thinking that way again, or, oh, I'm, I messed up or I, I, I reacted in the way I used to react. Like don't beat up on yourself, be patient, be kind to yourself. But the fact that you even recognize that is such a huge step right there that you don't even realize that you can then be like, okay, nope, I'm going to, I'm going to choose to now do it this way and respond that way. Also working to get more into your present moment can really help you to really think before you react, allowing yourself to just, even it's just to take a couple breaths before, like let's say your kids or something's happening that normally would just set you off. There are ways that you can just pause, just pause, take a couple breaths and really think, how do I want to respond? How do I want to act? How do I want to feel? And a lot of that can be so powerful in helping train you to start responding and reacting in the way you would love to and that you want to rather than your autopilot (laughs) typical type that we always tend to fall into when we're just living, letting life just happen, you know, instead of being more present and choosing and deciding, because like you say, I don't care where you are, even on in success in your life, there are always going to be challenges, unexpected things that happen to you. So the more you train yourself and the more you choose yourself and love yourself and surround yourself too, with a good community of supporters, the easier, like you say, will be to get out of those dips quicker Mm -hmm. and sooner and a more positive light, being able to see the silver lining in things and learning and growing from it rather than letting it defeat you. And, mm-hmm. and where you shouldn't, because it's not meant to defeat you. We allow it to sometimes be, when we don't know better. But when you do know better, this is what's so powerful about it. You can take back control and have a better outcome. Yeah, I love that. I mean, the awareness, I think. So if the two things I heard from you was awareness, but the yes. awareness brings the ability to reframe. Yes. Whatever's happening. But I also think the present moment, and I'm I'm laughing a little bit because when you become a parent, I <laughs> feel like a lot of the um, programs in which are very subconscious to whatever, however you were brought up really come out. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember I grew up in a very loud household. Um, I, my dad is Jewish. My mom's Italian. It was always very loud. Who could talk the loudest to be heard that, you know, nobody you know, <laughs> nobody was mad. It was just how that's how we all communicated. Oh, yeah. Right. That's my and, brother in law for you. <laughs> right. But it's, it's not really great. And it's, you know, but it is what it, it yeah. was, what it was at the time. But yeah. I swore like when I got my, when I had my own family, because as I became a teacher and as I lived with different roommates, I learned that, that you didn't have to really talk that loud to be heard. And it didn't have to feel so loud and just chaotic all the time. Um, and my parents were very lovely, loving people. It is just how they were brought, you know, so it's just one of those things. And so, but I just swore I would never do that. And so my first child, it was, I was really present, but she also was an easier child. She didn't really buck the system. She was was like, well, we don't cross the road because if you do, you could get really hurt. Okay. I'm not going to do that. You know, it's like, And then God was like, well, let's just give you something different. Right. And so (laughs) then my second daughter came and it was like, well, we don't cross the street. You want to watch me and see how fast I can get across. And I don't care. You know, it's like, so I was (laughs) like, so it was like that child for me was what I needed to, to read, show me that I had not really worked through those things that I had (laughs) just had an easy first kid. And so until this day, you know, there are times where I revert back to those old patterns because I'm not giving myself a breath 
I'm not living in the present moment to have a moment to really think through what it is and how I want to say things so that I get across what it is I'm really trying to get across. Yeah. And I think that, you know, when you have that dip again, or you have that re sub, it's okay, you know, and I, there's been many times where I've had to, to apologize and say, you know what, that is not who I am. And I'm sorry that I reverted back to an old pattern, but if we could do that again, this mm -hmm. is what it would look like. And I try to model that because I know it's a subconscious thing and I don't want that to be stuck in their minds. Like, you know, mm -hmm. it's okay for us to have a knee jerk reaction, but it's also okay for us to say, Hey, you know, that really wasn't the right thing. And this yes. is, you know, maybe how it should have gone or could have gone if I would have taken a moment to take a few deep breaths. Oh yeah. And that, um, that teaches them responsibility, like taking accountability for our own actions too. Sure, I, exactly. I think that's what, even with my husband, because, you know, I'm, yeah. you know, like you say, it's, it's a never, it's, it's a, it's a lifestyle. It's a never ending thing. Yes. You're, you're not going to just, Oh, do these things. And you're just perfect. And perfect. you're going to right. right every time we're humans and that's what's that's beautiful. Right. It's okay. But it's all about learning and growing. Like you say, and you're right. There's so many times I'm like, I'll catch myself like reacting to something. I'm like, Oh, I'm sorry. Let's start over. And he's, I love him because he has that supportiveness about him that allows me to just like I do for him when he kind of is having a bad day and he starts taking it out on me or starts reacting in his old pattern and I, I call him out on it. Right. He, he, he is, he's acknowledging that he apologizes and we start over and it's great. Right. And even with the kids, like I said, you're teaching them that core accountability responsibility. Cause I think that's so important. I feel like growing up, I was surrounded by the blame game, the blame victim minded type of mentality, sure, like sure. everyone else's fault. And I poor me, poor me, poor me, this happened to me. So this is why I'm suffering so much. Um, and it, it's just exhausting and it's no mm -hmm. way to live. It's so, it's like putting yourself in a prison really, yeah. because it like, just keeps you from like really living life and loving life. It really yeah. does. And I, I see mean, an awareness. I think awareness of where you want to shift things. And again, no matter what aspect of life and life is your health and wellness altogether, because it things are not separated. So how you do one thing is how you do all things. It, I do truly believe that. And so if you are, you know, a person who has the mentality all in, you know, it's all or nothing that mentality is, is very detrimental. It's a very fixed mindset, you know, and that is something that, you know, we can all work on because again, whether you're, you're looking to eat healthier, whether you're looking to sleep better, whether you're looking to um, react differently to situations, what, whatever it might be when, when we are all in or all out, we never, you can't grow from there. Mm -mm. You can't grow. You're just kind of stuck on one side or the other. So, and I, and Unfortunately, though, we've been conditioned in our society. That's how it goes. And so it's just a lot of undoing when we're redoing. So um, I heard, you know, you say awareness, the reframing. And I also was thinking like, give yourself grace because giving yourself grace allows you to be imperfect and everybody's imperfect. And so when you allow grace, you know, and you allow for a redo or, you know, a do over, you're really loving yourself more, really, you're, you're feeling more worthy of, of your choices. So uh, the present moment, I do find also to be one of the biggest game changers to being able to be aware, because it's like when you're living in the present, and you are aware of the choice, you give yourself a moment to take a breath. And it's like when we're speeding through life, and we're letting life happen, on a day to day, and we're not really showing up for our life yes. present. Mm -hmm. That's where I think a lot of the conflict that we run into, you know, kind of comes up, but also the reframing of situations, because again, you are going to have challenges every day on a daily basis in all seasons of life, right? There's never an mm -hmm. end to it because all of this is life. It's your life journey. And so when you are, have a challenge how you look at that challenge, you know, really does affect your internal, your fight or flight, you know, your chemicals that are released in within, and that really dictates how your, how your day goes. So, you know, I think finding challenges, trying to find the good in challenges mm -hmm. is, is one of the ways I have found. So I was just curious, like, 
because obviously people that are working on their life have a lot of challenges, right? And they can't see past the challenge. So what is it that you work, how do you work with people on seeing a challenge in a different light? So I love the whole uh, finding the silver lining in life because um, for instance, uh, about, oh my gosh, it's been <laughs> what, five years ago, almost six years ago, our house burnt down um unexpectedly and i remember that experience you know being terrible terrifying i mean i lost three oh. cats in that fire i, oh, I lost gosh. everything i watched my house it was actually my husband's birthday so it was like here we were thinking we were just me and him having a night to ourselves celebrating you know whatever and the next thing you know we hear this boom and realize like our garage because my car was in my garage uh, apparently had caught on fire and my you know and it was a terrifying experience so you know obviously going through something that's traumatic like that that's horrible I mean it took about what almost two years for us to rebuild our house and and whatnot but within that time we also connected in a way that was even stronger than before we ended up getting married going on a beautiful honeymoon we ended up getting this beautiful home but also crazy thing is, is a week. So my mom had actually been living with us and a week before this happened, she found her, her own place. And as a moving in thing, she decided to have my son Josiah at that time, come stay with her that weekend. So, you know, it's so easy to focus on the traumatic experiences or the bad things that happened to us without seeing the bigger picture. But my hope with everyone that I work with is for to help you see that silver lining that has yet to possibly come that we're, well, what can I learn from this? What, what could this possibly mean? How can I see this in a more positive way that could benefit me in the long run or even in a different way? It's all about shifting that perspective because it's what you, the perspective you place on things is what creates the reality for you. Mm -hmm. So if you want to look at it in such a negative light and be so negative about it and be harping it, then yes, that reality is going to happen as far as you're going to have that suffering. You're going to have that negative outcome because your mind's obviously looking for the evidence of it. So my hope is to help people to try to, like I said, reshift that perspective, change how you see it and, and trust that this is meant for you to either teach you, to help you out in your life in one way or another, or something positive can come out of this more than you realize. And that's what I hope to help people to shift and see um, no matter what they're going through. Because it's happened so many times for me throughout my life. And I hate that I allowed myself to suffer so much because I, all I knew back then was the negative, was to see everything in the negativity. Where now, when things don't go my way, I don't see it that way anymore. I think, okay, this is a, a choice. Oh yeah, yeah. Or maybe God's testing me. He's probably okay. trying to teach me how to have more patience. Cause you know, like you were saying earlier about rushing through life. Oh my God. That was one of my biggest things. When I was a teenager, I wanted to grow up. I wanted to be an adult. I was so ready. I literally wasted my teenage years instead of enjoying it and being a teenager, trying so hard to be an adult so hard to be somebody, somebody that I wasn't and just rushing, rushing, rushing through life. And it, it, it's, it's tragic when you do that, but it's so easy to get caught up in that when you don't know how you say how to live in that present moment, how to just appreciate what you have and see things the way you want to see them, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, for sure. You know, and uh, one of the things you just said about like having a situation be a certain way and, and again, looking at it in the dark or looking at it in the light, but I think a lot of that is control and control creates fear and it's the fear of the unknown when you, you don't think something's going the way you think it should be. But in all honesty, the way I, what my beliefs are, which I know are different from other people's beliefs, but I believe my, my plans kind of laid out for me and God has a good plan for me. And so sometimes I need to stop trying to push my agenda Mm -hmm. Right. And, and open up and let myself find the path that he is paving for me. Yeah. Um, and so again, if you believe in universe, whatever you believe in, there's a higher being basically. Mm -hmm. So there's there, you're not fully in now you are in control of decisions that you make. That is yes. one thing that you can control. And mm -hmm. so if you control, if you, uh, excuse me, if you make decisions to look at things in a different light, that is something that is in your control. 
Yes, but if exactly. you don't, then you close yourself off to, off from all other possibilities that are possible. Yes. So I think, I think for anybody that's listening to this episode, I would suspect or imagine that, you know, you've had some challenges in your life that has set you up to where, you know, you feel like, you know, you've been duped or you haven't, you know, something's negative. And so this conversation really is just to bring light that there are, are other ways and yes. that it's not easy. And you, you know, can use somebody like, you know, Mary, who is a life coach that has certain experiences. And obviously she's got personal experience, but she also has professional experience at this point, you know, to be able to help you walk through some of those, you know, stages of reframing and, and viewing things in a different light. And a life coach is for all aspects of life. Whereas like what I do is in the, is in the health side of things. And so my focus primarily is getting you to shift your mindset around the way you look at, you know, your primary and your secondary foods. So they're similar, but they just kind of address different, like uh, different areas, areas. Thank you. Exactly. Yes, um, exactly. And that's what, that's what's so beautiful about connecting with, you know, women like each other, like, you know, we, yes. we have so much to offer. We have, like you say, that ultimate um, realization and, and, and dreams and passions to help other women in whatever areas that we, we can. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so beautiful. And I love it. I, I, have, I was so overwhelmed just today of just realizing like where I'm at in my life and all the beautiful support and the, just seeing the results that are happening for people who are connecting with me. It's so amazing. And it's all I'm about. And I just, I'm so grateful and I'm so excited to help those that I'm meant to help and impact those I'm meant to impact and just, you know, keep building this a community of strong, amazing women who just are living life to the, to the fullest, you know, right. I love so it. I'm excited to kind of see where your journey goes. Cause I, I, my gut is telling me, you know, you, this is just the tipping point for you and you, you know, you've got such a story to share and such a result. And I, I think it's so powerful for, for people to hear things like that because it's encouraging because it makes them know and see what is possible. So if you're someone that's interested, all Mary stuff, obviously, or, you know, will be in the show notes, but she does have um, a course that she teaches. She does have a podcast. She has a Facebook group. Um, so we'll get you connected with all of those things down below um, in the show notes. If you are looking to work with a life coach, I would highly recommend Mary. I do think that, um, you know, she will make sure that you are taking the necessary steps if you're ready to, and yes. you make the decision to. Thank you so much for joining in. I really look forward to the next episode um, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks again for having me. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey guys, I hope that you enjoyed that episode as much as I enjoyed the conversation with Mary. Some of the key takeaways that I found to be important are the fact that during our childhood, during our theta state, we are conditioned by repeated information coming into our being, becomes deeply like ingrained in our programming. And so it influences the way our mind works and behaviors that we have throughout our life. Um, Number two, the importance of awareness. Developing self-awareness is crucial for personal growth. Recognizing and acknowledging our thoughts and beliefs, especially when they're negative or limiting, and then stopping, pausing, and questioning them helps you to grow on your journey. The third one is shifting from a, a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. Um, it, fixed mindset being that you believe that traits and abilities that you have are static and a growth mindset is where we believe that we have the ability to grow and change. Um, and this is an ongoing process that we go through throughout our entire life um, that basically helps us to, to keep creating positive change on our journey. Number four, living in the present moment. Being mindful and present in daily life allows individuals to respond thoughtfully rather than react impulsively to challenges and opportunities that come our way. This practice can lead to more positive outcomes. And we talked about the fact that, you know, when something arises, if we can take a moment to stop and breathe, we are allowing ourselves the ability to pivot and not have that same knee-jerk reaction. 
Um, and the last one, taking responsibility and finding the silver lining. I think taking responsibility for one's actions by apologizing when necessary or realizing that maybe what you did wasn't the way that you wanted to do it and being able to go back and have a redo um, gives us the opportunity again for growth and improvement um, on our journeys. Um, additionally, when we find the positives in a something that seems negative, a, a lesson or a challenge, we're also retraining our brain to look at things differently. And so again, you're affording yourself the ability to step forward in your personal growth. So I hope with one of those takeaways that I felt that were important, or maybe you found something else important, I hope whatever it is that you can apply one of them or a few of them, a few of the strategies, and that will help you to have your 1% shift for this week. Um, until next time, I hope you guys have a great day. Bye. Thanks for tuning in today. I loved being here with you. I hope that you got something from today's episode. I'd love to hear what resonated with you. Drop a comment below and if you feel led to, download the episode and share it with someone you love that needs to hear this message. As we continue to spread the goodness of this podcast, I'd love for you to help us by leaving a review on Apple Podcast or and or a rate on Spotify. As we increase listeners, we will come up more often when women are searching for podcasts to listen to. To stay connected with me, you can check out my social media pages at Live Life Balance with Robin. You can check out my website at livelifebalancewithrobin.com. You can book a discovery call. And if you're looking for a way to get started right now, you can opt in for my new quick guide for the Empty Nester Refresh. You can join my wait list for my new course, It's Your Time, which is going to be launching soon, which I'm super excited about. And as always, thank you for letting me be part of your day. It truly means a lot that you're allowing me to be on your wellness journey with you. Until next time, find peace, love, and light by breathing, being present, and allowing for all possibilities to happen.